Hi, my name is Alex with Dave Tech Tech Tutorials, and today we're going to be taking a deep dive into learning components. If you've ever wondered what components are, how to use them, how you can leverage them in your Jira projects, then you found the right video for you. Hey everyone, I have a simple question for everyone. How do you ensure that your dev tickets don't stall if someone is on leave? Resolution has a simple answer. Just install their out of office assistant and make sure that those tickets are automatically reassigned. It's super easy, but for some reason, many people don't know about this app. Make sure you click on the link in the description below for a 20% discount. Now, if you want a completely free way to support the channel, all you gotta do is take one second right now and click on that subscribe button. We are trying to get to 10,000 subscribers as this video is part of our Summer of Atlassian 2.0 series, and we're still a little shy. So make sure you take one second here, click that subscribe button, and tremendously help the channel grow. Also, make sure you drop a like, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you want to hear about and learn about other ways to support the channel, check out all the links in the description down below. Now, before we jump into Jira, I want to show you a picture because I want to explain what a component is first, because once you kind of have a good idea for what components are, then explaining to you how to use them becomes a lot more trivial. So let me jump into Confluence first and show you a Glyphy diagram where I've already kind of set up a little demonstration for you that will help articulate what a component is. So inside of Confluence, inside of this Glyphy diagram, I have a very, very basic just block diagram that I'm going to try to use to convey what a component is. Now, here, just to kind of describe to you what's going on in this diagram is you have a UI, you have a restaurant, we have some payment processing, a, some database for the restaurant that has a menu and locations. Now, you don't need to know what this all is or what it does, but this is just for a sample mock uh, application that I help build when we're explaining how to use Scrum inside of Jira. So, but what you do need to focus on is on the context of each box, because the easiest way to describe what a component is, is in your diagrams, because let's face it, every team, any team that is using Jira, and doing any kind of development and even for teams that are not using software development but for literally any team a picture is worth a thousand words here folks you want to have some sort of a diagram that articulates your thoughts how things connect how systems connect and how data should flow and so this diagram here carefully articulates these are all the systems and their interactions and how they're connected together and the best and easiest way to describe what a component is is that each of these boxes is a component. And that's all you need to know. That's the easiest way. That's how I like to explain it to folks, right? So if you take your architecture diagram, whatever existing block diagrams you have in your environment today, you should be able to look at it and go, hmm, where are all my boxes at? Don't worry so much about the wires, but where are all the boxes? And each one of these boxes becomes a component. And so now when you come over to Jira and you go into your Jira projects, I'm just gonna go into this demo for done status one here, you will have your component section here on the left, and all you gotta do is click into it, click create component, and you start typing away. So you start with your UI, and then you add your next one, which is like restaurant, okay? Now that's the easy thing, right? That's, that's just literally the best way to describe what a component is and how you can think about how do you visualize the components that you should or shouldn't have in your Jira projects. Now, let's take a deeper look into this though, right? Let's start peeling these onions back because you've seen me now create a couple of components, but let's talk about what, what's actually happening here on this screen. So first of all, the components is a quote unquote feature of your Jira project. Every Jira project should come with components out of the box, but in case you don't have it, you can always go down to project settings here, go to features here, and there should be a component section here that is probably turned off. So then you're just gonna have to slide this slider and make it green, and then you're gonna be good to go. Now, if you're in a software company managed project, you shouldn't have to worry about this. This is a default feature of a company managed Jira project, in the cloud at least, and so all of this should just work out of the box. But if you're like in a team managed, you might have to go and turn on your components. 
Now, in order to also access this section, it goes without saying you need to be a project level administrator. So that means that you are going to need to be able to see these little project settings down here on the bottom left corner. And if you can't see that, then you're not a project level administrator. And let me break your little heart because if you don't have that power, then the rest of this video is not gonna make a whole lot of sense. So you're gonna to wanna to pause here if you don't see project settings and you're gonna to wanna to talk to somebody with some power in your Jira instance and have them give you the right project level administrative privilege so that we can even create the components. Because for this next section, you do need to have this admin right in order to create components. Now you don't need all the admin levels in Jira as you've seen probably one of my previous videos. There's five different levels of administrations in Jira. So you just need the lowest. The lowest, most minimal impact is this project level administrator, okay? So once you do every component, so once you have the right permission, then you're gonna be able to come into your component section here and this blue button is gonna be enabled for you. And if you remember from a few seconds ago, if you don't have any components, that blue button is gonna be in the middle of your screen here and you're gonna be able to create your first component. Now, when you're creating a component, all you gotta do is give it a name. So I'm gonna reference back my diagram and I'm gonna do the payment processing next. And so you just type in for each box that's in your architecture diagram, use a name. Now the description is optional. I don't usually provide a description, but you can absolutely, if, you, if you're that kind of level of detailed person, you can add a description. Now the component lead, this one's interesting. I recommend that you do put somebody. Now I have a team of one in my Jira, so I'm gonna be the component lead for everything. But in most actual business case scenarios, you are going to essentially have a like an architect lead or a subject matter expert on each one of these boxes. And you're gonna wanna call out that person's name for a couple of reasons. One, accountability. That person is the expert in that little box. And what I'm saying is for each one of these boxes, right, you should have somebody that like architected it or is responsible for that box or is the expert or just knows how it works very, very intimately. So that person, whoever that person is in your team, you're gonna wanna put their name right in this box here under component lead so that you and the rest of your team knows who that lead is. Again, totally optional, but I like to put it in there because again, it just helps level set expectations. It helps communicate to the rest of your team who they should be talking to, who's responsible. And when things aren't going correctly, if you have too many bugs in a particular part of the system or just you're not getting enough traction, then you know who's the person accountable and who's going to help you fix it. Now, the next one is the default assignee. I do recommend you leave this alone. I don't typically touch this, but you have a couple of options. You, have, you can choose between project default, component lead, project lead, or unassigned. I leave the project default because, again, this is the out of the box. But what you need to know here is that that project default actually comes back over here to project settings. And under details, there's a project lead, but then there's a default assignee. And so whatever this is set to, so this one could be to the project lead, that's then gonna help, like, it's, it's a pretty big trickle down, right? But essentially because my project default is the default assignees to be unassigned, then the whole thing's gonna be unassigned. And that's what you want. You want your components to be unassigned, even though you, you could have and may have put in a subject matter expert into your uh, component lead, you don't want to bombard them. You don't ever wanna like just involuntarily sign people up for issues in Jira. You want people to have a conversation and, and, and have a healthy debate as to who and what and, and why somebody should work on something. So when you do this like auto assignment stuff, it just complicates things in my opinion and you lose a little bit of the accountability because people just get overwhelmed. Are you assigning issues to people on PTO? Without a vacation calendar inside of Jira, your tickets can stall out for weeks. Don't let your Agile delivery stall because somebody's on PTO. Resolution has the perfect solution for Agile teams of all sizes with their Out of Office Assistant app for Jira. Fix your current workflows by appointing backup owners and ensure throughput doesn't stall when team members are away on vacation or holiday. Check out the Out of Office Assistant in the Elastic Marketplace and get a 20% discount with the code in the description below. So once you have your components, so I obviously did not save that one, so uh, payment processing, right? You pick a lead, again, optional, and you, I would leave the default to sign you alone. You hit save, and now your component section has this information. 
Now, a couple of things that are happening here, right? So if you would have filled out the description, you would have a description here. If you had a component lead, you would have a component lead. And then you see the default assignee. In fact, you know what? Let me just, for the sake of this video, let's do one for the restaurant database. I'm actually going to put in like contains all the information about a restaurant. The lead is going to be me. So I'm just going to put my name here. I'm going to leave everything else. So as you can see, once you fill it out, it does populate all these columns. And then we're going to start focusing on these issues here. But before we go there, let's talk about what these three little dots do. So when you click on these three little dots, you're going to be able to edit. So that means you can come in back and change any of this information in case you put the wrong component lead. Maybe you got to change the component lead because your component lead left or is on another team. And if you want to just rename stuff, you can always do that as well. Okay. And then the other thing you can do is obviously delete it. Um, so that's a little bit more drastic. Um, I always tell people only delete if you absolutely know what you're doing, but uh, deleting is an option there. Now we have components. Great. What do we do with them now? Well, this is now where things start to get a little bit more interesting. So when you go to your timeline or your backlog view, wherever your issues are, right? All you got to do is open up an issue, whether it be a story, a task, a bug, whatever it is, it doesn't matter which issue type you're dealing with here. It's the component field out of the box should be enabled on almost every single issue type, unless you actually go in there and remove it, which is not recommended. But all you got to do is come over here, open up an, an issue. So I am opening up this DFDS dash two. And on the right hand side, you may have to go and expand more fields. Sometimes more fields is collapsed. So you may have to expand more fields, but just keep going until you find this components field right here. Now, when you click into it, you are going to see that the components we just created and we've been working with are now available as an option. And all you got to do is click on it. Now, optionally, you don't have to do this, but just think about it like this is this story that we just clicked on, that's that test, now is associated to that one component. But sometimes, depending on the complexity of your architecture, a story might impact two different components or three different components, as many as you want, really. And so you can actually add a couple more, right? So if we're doing the restaurant database, we can also say this is going to be part of the restaurant, right? And so now we can click on both of those components and Jira is going to register both components here. Now, if I go back to components on the left, you'll see that I now have one issue in both the restaurant database and just my restaurant component. And I can click into my component and I can get a little bit of a search where Jira is just going to automatically find me any issues that hit this component. Now, what do we do with this, right? Like, why is this important? Well, so the way I typically take advantage of this and why I use components is in two different parts. One is when I'm creating a new application, when we're doing new development, we're developing new features, the components is a great way to visualize like how many stories are going to one part of the system versus another part of the system, which part of the system maybe has a higher priority, right? If you're working like an MVP, you might prioritize one part of the system over another. Maybe you got to do a demonstration for your client, for your customer. So you're going to want to look at all the work that you got to do and go, Hey, we only have a limited amount of resources. So this is part of your refinement of, of your user stories, right? But we have a limited number of, of resources. We want to just focus and put our calories in the biggest bang for your buck and your product owner can go, well, the UI, let's just fake up a model or something like that. And let's just focus on the UI. So you're going to, you're going to just focus and just click on UI and you'll work on any issues that get returned that are like UI based. Again, if that was a discussion you had internally. Now that's when you're developing new features. The other way is when you're looking at bugs, right? When you're, when you're getting ready to deploy this application out to your customer, you may run into these scenarios or situations where things aren't working and a bug can be anywhere. But when you start classifying your bugs into each system that they're appropriately in, then it becomes a little bit more structured, a little bit more organized to kind of help troubleshoot and break down and go figure out, okay, where, where do we send the troops? Like where are the bugs at? Which system has the most amount of bugs and how do we go solve those problems? Because again, when you click on this item here, you can also then just do like a and issue type. So you can do an and issue type equals bug and just return your bugs. And so this is going to give you a laundry list of all the different bugs 
for that particular system. And again, you're, you can assemble your team and they can go and put out that fire as needed. Now, the final question that I'm gonna leave you here before we leave is you basically saw the what components are, how to use them, how to take advantage of them in Jira. But what happens if you're a team that doesn't necessarily develop software or have some sort of an architecture diagram? Well, my last tip that I'll leave you here with is the component is a custom field. Think about it like a custom field that you can provide whatever values you want. So the values here can be anything you want. They don't have to be specific to, again, to a block diagram like I showed here. They don't have to follow that way. It's just the field that you and your team can take advantage of and populate it with any options that you want. And so think about that for a second because most custom fields in Jira do require you to talk to your Jira administrator so that they can populate it with the values. But you get one free field, so in case you're you're not doing any of that block stuff in case you don't have an architecture or any of that stuff, then you can take advantage of this field and literally just use it for whatever you want with whatever values you and your team want. And so that's the last tip that I'll kind of leave you when we're thinking about components. Obviously the first stuff that I showed you, that's the proper way. That's how Jira and Atlassian intended components to be used. But honestly, if we're just being very, very um, direct here, this component field can be used for whatever the heck you want and you can put whatever information you want in here with just, again, giving your team some autonomy to be able to pick and choose however you want. If you've ever assigned debt issues to someone who is on vacation, remember that the out of office assistant for Jira is there for you and it is incredibly easy to set up and use. It has integrations with Slack and Tempo and you can connect to Outlook or Google Calendar using Zapier. So you don't even have to maintain any dates, super easy to use. Try it out today and get 20% off by using the promo code in the description down below. I bet it won't disappoint you. So anyways, that's it for this video. If you found value, do please make sure you smash the subscribe button. Again, we are trying to hit 10,000 subscribers. This video is going to be part of that series where that goal is for 10,000. So if you're watching this video and you made it this far and you're still not subscribed and you're wondering, hmm, this was a really good video. How can I support the channel? Well, all you gotta do is smash the subscribe button, drop that little like button, and also add a comment, add a question, add a thank you for this video. All these signals are really, really good for the algorithm and you know how the algorithm loves to promote these kind of videos. So and finally, make sure you do check out the links in the description, have a lot of information in there for how you can also support the channel. So that's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one. Love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need